It's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland, where scientists tested hundreds of chemical and biological substances on at least 7,800 servicemen. So could this really be happening? Well, joining me to help discuss this is Dr. Colin Ross, president of the Colin A. Ross Institute for Psychological Trauma. Dr. Ross, tell me, is this really happening? Did the government really take part in mind control experiments on soldiers? What kind of stories have you heard from the survivors of these experiments? I know you've had access to thousands of documents from the CIA. Well, it's just like you just said, there's two kind of streams of information. There's stories from survivors, and then there's the documents. So if I go to the documents first, they're very, very detailed, 15,000 pages uh, plus. And we're starting back in 1950 with projects called Artichoke and Bluebird, which were then rolled over into MK Ultra, which in turn was rolled over to MK Search. And then all the documents stop in 1973. So in that era, 50 to 73, uh, there's a whole host of different types of mind control experiments, hypnosis, LSD, special interrogation chambers, and brain electrode implants. And so there's projects uh, in the CIA documents and in Army records where electrodes are put into uh, dolphins, and the dolphins are directed by remote transmitter to deliver a bomb to a target. And there's a discussion of a uh, similar technology in cats and other animals. There's uh, research funded by the Office of Naval Research published in mainstream journals where electrodes are put in the brains of cats, dogs, and their behaviors controlled, and even human beings at uh, Harvard and Yale. So, so this is absolutely documented fact. So tell me how commonplace this was. Is this, are we talking about one program that took place decades ago? Or do you think it's happening more often than that? And if so, how could it be so secretive? I mean, most people would think this can't be true. This is, a stuff, this is stuff out of a movie. Right. Uh, it was not just one program back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. It was Harvard, uh, Yale. Tulane, UCLA. So we know there was more than one university involved, more than one branch of the military, more than one program for a fact. What's going on currently, of course, is all classified. People tell you stories about it, but I can't actually prove that it's happening today. I'm certain that it is, but I can't prove it. Okay, so did these people know what was happening to them? I mean, uh, in a lot of the articles I've read, it seemed like they kind of volunteered to be part of some sort of experiment, right? Yeah, and a lot of the different experiments, like there was a group of children in a school for the mentally retarded in New England. Their parents were told that the children were participating in a study of a dietary supplement, but actually plutonium was being added to their cereal. So there's all types of different experiments where no real consent was given, the people didn't really know what was going on, and they were basically tricked. And I think in the brain electrode experiments, it's kind of a combination of both. Some patients were told you have an electrode put in your brain, but it's for some therapy purpose when it was really research. Others were told, go, go here and volunteer and you don't really have much choice. And others were given sort of a more exact story. So what exactly would the government do when they would control someone's mind? What could they make someone do when they manipulated their brains? Well, what it describes in the documents and in the published papers is uh, there's actually photographs of a 16-year-old girl. She's got a series of electrodes in her brain. Depending on which button's being pushed on the transmitter, she's either strumming her guitar, pounding furiously on the wall, or staring off into space. With the animals, they're actually directed to walk or swim to a target. So you can control uh, the actual physical motion and the mental state. How detailed and how fine-tuned that's gotten since 1970, again, I don't know because it's all classified. But and it must have gotten a lot more developed. How fast can this happen? I mean, how fast can someone's mind be taken over? Does it happen over a period of weeks or days? Well, the, the electrodes is a little different because you just put the electrode in, 
you push the button and it happens right away. But with a more brainwashing style where there's sensory deprivation, sensory isolation, hypnosis, good cop, bad cop techniques, uh, we're talking months minimum. It's a long-term conditioning process. And how long can someone's mind be controlled? I've seen videos of people in these kind of hypnotic states. How long are they in those states? Well, they, they come back in experimental literature that's published in normal journals. You can have a post-hypnotic suggestion that's implanted that the person doesn't remember, and you can tap into it months at least later, if not years. In the brainwashing literature, apparently, people can be in a sleeper state indefinitely. But of course, this is all secret and classified, so you can't actually document and prove it. And you mentioned that you are convinced that this could still be going on today. What other kind of experiments do you think the CIA could be doing today? Well, I would say uh, intelligence agencies around the world probably have Manchurian candidate sleepers operative today. And they're using a whole range of techniques to control and create them, which is in, in terrorist organizations, there's going to be the religious doctrine part of it. But it's the basic mind control programming technology that we've known about for decades. You control a person's life space, control the information flow, uh, talk to them, talk to them, talk to them, convince them, convince them, convince them, frighten them, terrorize them, soften them up with hypnosis, drugs, which can be IV drugs or drugs by mouth. It's, so it's a whole range of different techniques. It's not just one thing. Wow, yeah, it's a very unbelievable story, but uh, so fascinating. That was Dr. Colin Ross, president of the Colin A. Ross Institute for Psychological Trauma. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.